Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back. I appreciate you tuning into the show today. Um, I am really excited to be talking to you today. Um, things going on right now, this is like the perfect example of how it helps when you have a strong sense of self-esteem and you've done the work to build yourself up where things can happen in your life that could be chaotic, but you manage them well because you believe in yourself, you have confidence in yourself, you know that things are going to work out, you're connected to something greater than yourself, and you just know that things are going to work out. So here's what's going on. <clears throat> Last week, I went out to San Diego. Um, I helped my daughter move out of her dorm for her from her freshman year. Very exciting. I'm so proud of her. She did so well, um, made some good friends. Uh, survived the year well, um, just was a rock star, and I'm just so proud of her. But while I was there, the big news here, um, I solidified everything from my new apartment, and I will be moving to San Diego next month. And I am really excited. I'm really scared. Um, there are a lot of feelings going on. I mean, one of the things to know that when you become more emotionally aware, all the feelings that hit you, you get to see and feel every single one of them. And what I know a lot of people do and why I do this program is for you to no longer sweep your feelings under the rug or turn them into something that they're not, but rather to see your feelings for what they are, deal with them, acknowledge them, honor them, and then choose which one you want to give more energy to. So with the move, am I scared? Yes, because it's an unknown. I always feel a little, a little scared when I walk into an unknown situation. But I have confidence in me that when I get to this new space, everything's going to work out great because history tells me I'm going to always land on my feet. So I am. Are there going to be bumps along the way? Absolutely. Is it going to be totally smooth sailing, Pollyanna, the whole time? Absolutely not. But I'm prepared for that. And I know that I can handle whatever life throws at me. So it's going to be awesome. So I'm moving to San Diego. And the reason why is because a few months ago, um, my wife and I got divorced. And I have a lot of feelings around that. Um, feelings of hurt and sadness and guilt and shame, and, and a whole plethora of feelings on that part of the continuum. But there are other feelings as well. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm hopeful. There are so many positive feelings as well. You know, I don't want to label it positive or negative feelings because each one has its own value. But I guess the point is there's a whole range of feelings going on with this. The bottom line with the divorce, I know that it was the right decision for me, and I'm happy I made that decision. It took a lot of courage to do that. It took a lot of strength because there were a lot of people that did not want that to happen, but I needed to focus on what was going to make me happiest, and, and that's what it was. So my ex-wife is now living in Sarasota. She has a great job. She's around friends. She seems happy. And I'm happy for her, and I want nothing more than for her to be happy and successful with the rest of her life. I mean, come on. She is the mother of my child. I want her to be happy, and I will do whatever I can to support that. Well, not anything. <laughs> that would have meant stay, and I wasn't willing to do that. So I'm dealing with a divorce. She wants me to sell the house. I love this house. It's my dream house, but I do know that it's time to let it go and move into something more manageable, something where I'm going to have the same amount of joy um, and, and freedom. And I realized one morning I woke up and I pretty much had this exist existential crisis of, oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm by myself for the first time in 20 years. I'm living in this amazing house in this great city, but what is it that I really want? What is it that's going to bring me the most joy? And when I sat there and I kind of did a mini meditation and I sat there, I thought, what would make me happiest? And it was like, boom, moving back to San Diego. 
And I lived there for about 10 years. My life shifted there. I got sober in San Diego. My recovery network started there. I graduated college there. I had my first jobs there in recovery. My career took off there. So San Diego is really my home. So I'm really looking at it as I'm going home. And it's under different circumstances. It's going to be, you know, I'm not expecting anything. I'm not expecting it to be the same as it was. Um, I'm not expecting the people or anything to be the same. I'm expecting the weather to be the same. Weather's pretty awesome in San Diego. But other than that, it's going to be a new experience for me. And, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited about it. And am I scared? Yes, but I'm more excited than I am scared. And I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I want to ex explain this um, dynamic. The body's physiological response to fear is heart rate increases, blood pressure goes up, senses are more acute, uh, maybe a little sweat on the brow or, or on the upper lip. And, and that's how the body responds to fear. The body's reaction or physiological response to excitement is blood pressure goes up, heart rate increases, senses become more acute and aware, and there might have a little bit of sweat on your brow or on your upper lip. The physiological response to fear and excitement are exactly the same. So the only difference is what you choose to call it and what you tell your brain that it is. If you tell your brain, oh my God, I'm so scared, the body goes into fear mode. Oh my God, you're fear, you're in fear. And, and what are you gonna do and how are you gonna do it? And all of a sudden it gets into this thing where it just builds on itself and all of a sudden the fear can become overwhelming. Whereas if you call it, oh, I'm really excited, your body responds and says, oh, I'm excited. And your brain says, I'm excited. And now all of a sudden, there's a whole different release of endorphins. And there's a whole different release of what happens in the body as a result of that. So you get to choose that. And yes, there are some situations where fear is more reasonable to feel than excitement. But in things like a move or a change in job or change in relationship. You know, I was in a relationship. I wasn't happy and it wasn't her. There's nothing wrong that she did. She just wasn't, we weren't evolving on the same path and it was time for something different. So I, it's possible for me to say, oh my God, I'm really scared. What if I don't find anyone else? And what if I'm alone for the rest of my life? And all these fear-based things can happen. What if this was the wrong decision? Or I can say, wow, okay, I know this was the right decision for me and I'm excited about what the future holds. I might be alone for a while. I might be alone the rest of my life or I might find someone that really resonates at a similar frequency to me that I'm gonna get along with better that's gonna support me emotionally and spiritually and mentally. That'd be awesome and maybe she's out there. And to be honest, I think I have a better shot of finding her in San Diego than I do in Orlando. And that's just my thought. I might be wrong, but that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. So I'm moving. And am I scared? Yes. Am I excited? Oh, yeah. And here's what's been happening. Ever since I made that decision to move, this is how the universe works. If you make the right decision in something, the universe starts giving you a lot of gifts. And again, you can choose to call it universe, God, na Mother Nature, whatever but I call it the universe, is giving me all these amazing gifts, such as found an amazing apartment and they're giving me like six weeks free rent. I didn't know that that was going to happen, but it did. Um, I've made some amazing new friends in San Diego. One of them has a good friend who owns a furniture shop and he's giving me an amazing deal on furniture for my new apartment. And it just so happens his significant other is a decorator and she's helping me decorate my new place. I mean, what a beautiful gift. Again, count the gratitude things you have to be grateful for, the gratitude list in your life. Check that on a regular basis because it's easy to fall into this is going wrong and this isn't happening right and this isn't, I don't like this and this person is this and that. I have a lot of people in my life who are struggling right now and 
and I feel bad for them and I have empathy for the situations that they're in. But all I can do is control what's happening in my life and do the best I can to support them. But with what's going on in my life, yeah, there are the chaos points, but there are the gratitude points too. And I choose to focus on those. So not only am I, do I have this amazing apartment with which will be great furniture and someone helping me to put that all together. I also had a friend of mine say, Randy, you know, I have a friend who is up at one of the local colleges and they have a chemical dependency counselor program there. Maybe you could teach a class or two there. It's like, that would be awesome. So I contacted the person in charge of the program and said, hey, I'm interested in maybe teaching a class or two. And he said, you know, it's not going to happen in the fall, but when you get here, let's have a meeting, sit down and talk about it. Maybe there will be something in the future. How amazing is that? And then, but wait, there's more. And then I got a, a call from someone that I knew years ago from another business. She's now working with um, a program called the Transformation Network. I think it's called Transformation Network Radio. Ooh, I should probably figure that out and get that down because I am now going to be hosting two shows on the Transformation Network. And I am really excited. I was planning to do one. I was going to do this one, the Becoming Your Own Best Friend program. And I'm going to be moving to that platform. But the cool part is I'll be on the TNN network, but they're also going to send me the recording edited and ready to go that I can then put on my channel. So nothing's going to change here. Everything's going to be exactly the same, except the person who's editing the videos is going to be different. So, and they might put the cool intro and outro and all that on there. So getting more professional. So I'm excited about that, but everything's going to be exactly the same. You don't have to go anywhere else. And one of the things I'm not good at doing, but I want to do it now because I just remembered. And if I wait, I'm going to probably going to forget again. Um, please subscribe. If you are enjoying these programs and would like an easier access to them, hit the subscribe button down here on YouTube or the like button on your favorite podcast channel that you're listening this on this to. Um, Cause I know that's going to help in the future. Yeah. <laughs> Bottom line. Also, I just like to know that people are watching or listening because I put a lot of energy into these and it's kind of nice to know. So I really appreciate when people make comments um, and, and I love to see them and hear them. And I just found out something really cool. Oh, they're not going to like that. I say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I just found out last week that my sister and my brother-in-law watched my programs and hi. Um, and I, when they told me that it just filled my heart. I just felt so humbled and so grateful that they're watching these programs or listening to these programs. So I'm overwhelmed with gratitude right now. I'm just feeling on top of the world with everything going on. And yes, there's on both sides of the fence. I could sit here for the next 10 minutes telling you about all the things in my life that are obstacles or hurdles or things that are stumbling blocks, but I'm taking care of those and they come up and I deal with them. I push them aside and I choose to focus on the things I, I have to be grateful for. And there are so many more of those. So why do I want to put my energy in the negative when I can put it in the positive? It doesn't negate. It doesn't sweep it under the rug. I see it. I acknowledge it. I honor it. But I want to move forward with the positive. And that seems to work better for me. I seem to go to sleep happier when I do that. So not only does the transformation network, are, not only are they going to do uh, the BFF program, they wanted me to do another program. I'm going to be doing two programs for them. The other one, I was actually talking to the person who's in charge of the whole thing. And she said, I hear you have a new idea for a recovery-based program. And I said, I do. And it's something I talk about a lot. And I would love to do a show on this. And being a person in recovery, just celebrated 40 years a couple of weeks ago, um, and I have my master's in counseling. I mean, I worked really hard to finish my degree and get my master's. And I feel like I have a lot of experience in the recovery realm. And I'm going to be doing a new program called Epic Recovery. And when we talked about it, what I said to her was, I see that there's a huge difference between people who are sober and people who are in recovery. 
There are some who are very happy just having their five years, 10 years, you know, quoting chapters from the big book of AA and doing those kind of things. And, and they're happy. And that's great. But I want more than that. I want to be in recovery. I want to look at my old patterns and the things that I was doing that were not that might have served me well then, but do not serve me any longer now. So I want to take responsibility for my life and my actions and the things that I do in the world. And I want to be a better person tomorrow than I am today. I want to be a better person next week, next month, next year than I am today. And that's being in recovery. And it's an active process and it doesn't end. And it takes looking at myself, looking at my physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual being. And what can I do to improve and be better today than I was yesterday? So my program is called Epic Recovery. It's going to be on the TNN network. I think my programs are going to air on Friday afternoons at 1 o'clock and 1.30 Pacific time. So 4 and 4.30 Eastern. And I feel so blessed and so grateful that I want to be an example of what happens when you work on your own personal growth, you work hard on raising your self-esteem and your self-confidence and the way you look at the world and the way that the world treats you back and look for ways to make a difference and be of service to others. You know, today I was at the UPS store and I was leaving and there was a guy across the street holding this huge box in both hands. And he was walking towards me and I waited in, for him to get closer and open the door for him to get through the door because I knew he was going to struggle holding this box. And I thought that's what I would want someone to do for me. So I did that for him. Now, could I have just left and gotten my car and went? Sure. But I wanted to be of service. You know, every morning I'd, I'm on my knees saying, show me ways that I can be of service today. And I knew I was going to be doing this program for you today. And this is another way that I'm of service to people. And I always look for ways to be of service. And it could be little things like opening the door for someone. It could be a bigger thing like devoting my, my time and my energy to doing a podcast. So there are so many different ways. And I have found that the true key to happiness is find, staying in gratitude as much as you can and finding ways to be of service to others. So here I am, newly divorced, selling my dream house, moving across the country to San Diego, starting a new business. I'm also going to start my coaching practice back up. I kind of put that on pause for a little while, but I realized I, I feel like I have a lot to offer here to people who are watching and listening, but also to people who want more personalized attention, who really want to dive into what can I do in order to improve the quality of my life? What can I do to raise my self-confidence and my self-esteem? I keep finding these obstacles in my life and I'm turning hurdles into walls. How do I leave the hurdles as hurdles? So I want to play more a role in helping people do that. I want to start doing my speaking business again. I've kind of taken a break from that too. So I am so excited. Am I going to be busy? Yeah. Am I going to have as much free time? No, but I'm going to be being of service and, and helping other people to improve the quality of their lives. Wow. What is better than that? Not much. So I am really, really excited about what the future holds. I'm going to be sharing more of that as we move forward with these programs. And there will be a shift in some of this. I'm excited also to see how it's going to go um, as they start doing the editing and putting all the different components into this. So the future looks really bright. And you can have that too. People say to me all the time, how are you so happy all the time? I'm like, I'm not. I probably have 10 days a year where I'm miserable and I'm sad and I just want to listen to the song Break Stuff and, and I just am feeling off. I have about 10 a year. And the reason I only have 10 a year is because I allow myself to have them. When I'm just having one of those bad days, I just let myself have a bad day. And I stay in bed and I watch TV and I do whatever. Um, if I have to call in sick that day, I will. Um, I used to, but I don't anymore because now I work for myself. The freedom 
of allowing yourself to just be who you are and to not put all these restraints and confinements on yourself to freely express and acknowledge your feelings. It's amazing what happens when you start to do that. And the universe celebrates and it starts to give you more gifts. If I can do it, you can do it. There's no, again, I say this all the time. There's no like magic anything that I have done. It's not like when I hit 20 years of sobriety, these people said, oh, you hit 20 years. Let me show you what the secret is and what you can do. No, it's not like that. I read a lot of books. I did a lot of therapy. I had a lot of coaches. I had a lot of mentors and sponsors and, and people that were supporting me along the way in the books. When I would read something that kind of hurt, it's like, wow, I wonder why that hurt. I didn't just turn the page. It's like, let's look at this. And journaling, oh, what a beautiful gift journaling is. I did a lot of work. Now, do I have to do as much now as I did earlier on? No, but at the beginning, it seemed like it was constant. It was all the time, but it was only like three to five years. And for those of you who are thinking three to five years, hey, you're going to have those three to five years anyway. So how cool would it be if at the end of those three to five years, you had 80% more happiness in your life than you do now? Now, it can't be guaranteed, but I can tell you that it can happen. So I put a lot of things out there. My book, my coaching, please subscribe. There are so many ways that, that this can help you. But if you want suggestions on books to read, movies to watch, um, different ways that, that you want to enhance your version of self, let me know how I can help you. I, I love answering emails. I love when people make comments. So let me know what I can do to be of service to you. So thank you for watching or listening. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback on the changes that we're about to make. So I wish you all the best. And I hope for every happiness in the world to happen for you. Everything you want, manifest your happiness, make it happen. Anything is possible if you just get out of your own way. So thank you for being here. I look forward to seeing you sometime in the future, maybe one of my retreats or something else I'm putting together, but I wish you well. You take care. Have a great week, and we'll be back with you next week. Take care. Bye.